ignore that Forgetting all about hell in paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيد الأولين والآخرين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد My dear viewers, welcome to another live edition of our program Gardens of the Pious Today's episode is number 482 of the blessed series of Riyadh al-Salihin by Imam Nawawi May Allah have mercy on him And it will be the first in a new chapter, chapter number 220, باب ما يقال عند رؤية الهلال. So this chapter describes the supplication that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to recite upon seeing the crescent of the new month, the birth of the new moon, the supplication at the sight of the new moon, at the outest of every lunar month. The hadith is collected by Imam al-Tirmidhi and it is narrated by Talha ibn Ubaidillah radiyallahu anhuma. Hadith number 1228. And it's only one hadith in the chapter. Before I quote the hadith and before we learn its meaning, it's really important to understand that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was a grateful servant to his Lord and he taught his companions and his ummah. So offering the prayers or fasting or doing voluntary acts of worship why knowing that he will be not only in paradise but rather no one will enter paradise before him. The first person to set his foot in heaven would be Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yet, he was very active in worship. And when he was asked, he said, أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبَدًا شَكُورًا Shall I not be a grateful servant to give thanks and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his countless blessings? So, living to witness the birth of a new lunar month, living an extra day gives you a chance to earn more reward, to draw nearer towards Allah, to increase the balance of your good deeds, to increase the level of your Iman. So this is a blessing, especially if it is a blessed month that you are about to witness, the month of Ramadan for innocence. So it is something worth giving thanks. So the Prophet wasallam taught us to supplicate at the birth of the new moon, as in the following hadith, which is narrated by Talha ibn Ubaidillah radiyallahu an. Anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallama kana idha ra'a al-hilal qal Allahumma ahillahu alayna bil-amn wal-iman wal-salamati wal-islam rabbi wa rabbuka Allah hilal rushdin wa khayr. Hilal Rushdin wa Khair. What did he used to say and what it means? Whenever the new moon of the lunar month is sighted, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi used to recite the following supplication. He would say, O oh Allah, let this moon appear on us with security and iman, with safety and Islam. Then, he would address the crescent saying, O oh moon, 
your God and my God is Allah. May this moon be bringing guidance and good. Hilalu Roshdin wa Khayyar. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this month and the birth of the new moon uh, bring in am wa iman, security and faith. And subhanallah, if there is no am, there is no iman. And if there is no iman, there is no amana, there is no am. There is a very strong bond between security and faith and between faith and security والسلامه والاسلام السلامه is peace security as well and al-islam is submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it is not just to live another day or another month but to live it in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to observe our religious duties freely with comfort and enjoy it we don't have to worship in a bunker or underground there must be am and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded Quraysh and the Meccans with his favor upon them when he granted them security Two great blessings. Let Quraysh worship the Lord of this house, whom they know that this house is his, the Kaaba. Let them worship him alone and not associate others with him in worship. Why? For countless reasons. Some of them, very prominent, that you feel and you sense 24-7. أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعَ He fed them out of hunger, he granted them security while everyone around them is in a state of fear. Uli Quraysh, he granted them security out of fear. Uli Quraysh used to travel across the desert with peace and security, feeling safe that no highway robbers or other tribes will dare to attack them. Why? You say, this is Quraysh, the custodians of the Kaaba, the custodians of the Haram. So they're sacred people because of the sacredness of Mecca, of the Haram, and Al-Bayt Al-Atiq. أَطْعَانَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ Mecca is a place which has no food, no plantations, no vegetations, but يُجْبَى إِلَيْهِ ثَمَرَاتُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ رِزْقًا مِنْ لَدُنَّا but the foods of every kind is brought to this place by the leave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Due to the blessings of the supplication of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So he reminded them with these two favors. Al-Am or security is, is such a great blessing. I lived somewhere where at one point I wasn't able to go out to pray even the masjid was walking distance. We were in a state of fear. They were shooting right and left. You know, uh, robbers, lack of security. So only then you remember, subhanallah, you know, it makes all the difference. When you go to sleep and you feel safe and secure, your children are secure, your wife is secure, your family is enjoying this security. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would invoke Allah to make this time and this crescent or this moon bring about security which would lead to Iman, which would make the believers freely practice their faith and fulfill their religious duties. وَالسَّلَامَةُ islam Salama is safety. Safety from ailments, from diseases, safety from anything that threatens or harms our bodies, our souls, then he would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through addressing the moon saying, Rabbi wa Rabbuka Allah, O moon, your Lord and my Lord is Allah. O Allah, make this crescent hilal rushdin 
وخير may this moon be bringing guidance and good that's a beautiful supplication which also indicates that going out to sight the moon at its birth is perceived as an act of worship when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the other hadith sumu li ru'yatih wa aftaru li ru'yatih as as we were young young kids we used to go out to the plain we pass the rail station and there will be an open area where we can see the birth of the new moon if it is uh, the last day of Sha'ban and on the last day of Ramadan we do the same you see everybody's going out so that they can sometimes see it with the naked eye without the need of a telescope or magnifying glasses you can see the moon so going out to sight the birth of the moon and reciting this supplication is an act of worship and also it is a sign of recognizing that this person and this time and this month and this place and everything actually are his Rabbi wa Rabbuk Allah your Lord and my Lord is Allah none other than him has a right to be worshipped as I said it was only one hadith and I hope you remember this supplication so if you happen to see the birth of the new moon remember to recite this supplication insha'Allah and now with a new chapter chapter number 222 the chapter deals with the merit of eating the sahur meal and the excellence of the lion until a few minutes before dawn. The hadith we have in this chapter, the first hadith, because we have multiple hadith, is hadith number uh, 1229. It's a sound hadith narrated by Anas ibn Malik, agreed upon its authenticity. And Anas رضي الله عنه قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تسحروا فإن في السحور بركة متفق عليه and I want to bring to your attention that sometimes you would hear the word سحور and sometimes you would hear the word سحور what is the difference between سحور with a zabar or فتحة on top of the letter سين versus سحور with a page or ضمة on top of the letter سين As-Sahur is taken from the time of eating this meal. But the word Sahur refers to the meal, whether it's food or drink, even if it's just water, which you consume it before Fajr with the intention of eating this meal in order to begin fasting upon seeing the, the dawn or the Fajr. We will be studying some ahadith how the Prophet ﷺ said uh, eat the sahur meal, there is plenty of blessings in it. If you can find then some dates, otherwise a sip of water will do it because the water is tahur. Okay? So when we say the sahur, I cannot just say a meal or it is the name of a food. It is the name of the food or the drink which a person consumes at the last part of the night right before dawn with the intention of fasting next morning in a few minutes half hour or an hour or so while as suhoor with pesh or dhamma on the letter seen it is the same spelling though sahur seen ha waw ra suhoor seen ha waw ra but suhoor refers refers to the process of eating or the process of drinking the sahur meal so sahur like we spoke about wudu and wudu wudu is the water which we use for ablution same spelling of wudu 
but with dhamma or pesh on the first letter which is the wow wudu is the actual process of ablution see the vowel changes the meaning same word could be noun could be subject could be verb subhanallah so as suhoor is the process of consuming the meal of suhoor before fajr in order to begin fasting with dawn. So Anas radiyallahu anhu qal, qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tasahharu fa inna fi sahuri barakah. Which means, O servants of Allah, eat the sahur meal. Indeed, in eating sahur, there is a lot of blessings. So when he says barakah, anonymous, plenty of blessings, lot of goodness. How much? Yeah, I'll let you imagine, I'll let you think, but it is a lot of blessings. What could be there of barakah or uh, blessings in the sahur meal? Number one, and before thinking about the nature of the food that you'll be eating or the medication you'll be administering, fulfilling the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of eating the sahur meal at the time of sahar. And again, sometimes you feel not hungry. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, please eat something. It will help you throughout the fasting during the day. Uh, drink some water, because I know that once you get up for fajr, many of us, especially our kids, Ramadan, while fasting, you try to wake them up because now Ramadan is coming during this classic year. So they have been studying and have been awake and now they come to sleep a couple hours before Fajr and after Taraweeh. You wake them up for, you say, I don't want to eat. Daddy, leave me alone. I don't want to eat. I'm okay. Trust me, I'm not hungry. Sometimes you wake them up and they're too sleepy. So they don't want to eat. They don't want to drink. But when they get up for Fajr to pray, once they finish the prayer, you hear them all saying, oh, I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I have a dry mouth. That's why this sahur meal will satisfy you and will help you at least until noon so that you would not begin suffering or sensing the hunger or thirst soon after Fajr. It will, you know, satisfy you for a few hours. So it will make fasting affordable and likable for you versus somebody who ate the iftar meal, broke his fast at Maghrib and he didn't eat anything. So that means He's going to be fasting for 24 hours, not for 13 or 16 or 17 hours, 24 hours. So half day he cannot eat, he can, I'm sorry, half day he cannot function anymore. He barely can get up to pray. At work, he cannot function. At school, he cannot study. He, he's not attentive. Why? Because now all he's thinking about he's starving. He's very thirsty. Is getting dehydrated. So a sahur meal is full of blessings. It will nourish you. It will provide you. I'm not saying, uh, nor did anyone say that you eat your fell. Okay? Then you started having uh, reflux and uh, stomachic or, uh, you know, hyperacidity because you stuffed your stomach with food in order to prepare for fasting. No. Eat moderately. So it will help you for a few hours until noon. Then inshallah you can endure that patiently until sunset. Help me out. You can send me to the page what other barakah you assume will be in eating the sahur meal. I can share with you another barakah. The Prophet وسلم, gave the parable of a person who remembers Allah and one who does not is like the living and the dead. Like the living and the dead. And the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, used to celebrate the praise of Allah and mention his name in every condition. So when you get up for the sahur meal with this intention, this is an act of worship, guaranteed. So you get up and you say the supplication for waking up. Alhamdulillah, ladi ahyana ba'da ma amatana wa ilayhi nushur. Thanks and praises to Allah for bringing us back to life after he has caused us to die. And unto him will be the gathering and resurrection. 
Then if you were to eat, you begin by the basmala. You mention the name of Allah and you finish, you say Alhamdulillah. And in the beautiful hadith, the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَرْضَى عَنِ الْعَبْدِ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ الْأَكْلَةَ فَيَحْمَدَهُ عَلَيْهَا أَوْ يَشْرَبَ الشَّرْبَةَ فَيَحْمَدَهُ عَلَيْهَا So you earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a few minutes after eating and drinking. The messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, says, Indeed, Allah is well pleased with one of his servants. Whenever he eats, then he says, Alhamdulillah. Whenever he drinks, then he praises Allah and he thanks Allah. So you know that this uh, bite, this food, this meal, this drink, this sip of water is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You give thanks and no matter how huge, how big is the blessings, how delicious was your sahur or dinner, no matter how huge is this risk, giving thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a greater ni'mah than the blessing of Eden itself. Allah is most pleased with you. When you say, Alhamdulillah. The following hadith will teach us that we leave a few minutes gap between sahur and adhan. Those few minutes is short and brief time after uh, eating and until uh, you hear the adhan of dawn or fajr. In Surah al zariyat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the qualities of al-muttaqeen uh, who will be fi jannatin wa uyun insha'Allah will be in gardens of paradise and water springs may Allah make us among them so he says kanu qalilan min al-layli ma haja'oon wa bil ashari hum yastaghfirun they prayed their night prayer wa bil ashari plural of sahar which is referring to the time before fajr that is the best time for supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for celebrating the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, وَبِلْ أَسْحَارِ يعني is not once or twice. Normally, they do that. At the time of Sahar, they get up and they make istighfar. They keep themselves busy with seeking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَبِلْ أَسْحَارِ هُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ So, uh, that's plenty of blessings. MashaAllah. That's why the Prophet sallallahu said, تَسَحَّرُوا فَإِنَّ فِي السَّحُورِ baraka And we have learned the difference between uh, the two vowels in the case of sahur and suhoor. I hope you take it as a homework and you can um, write the answer on my page. What is the difference between sahur and suhoor? Similar to wudu and wudu. Great. Um, many people if they stay up to pray night prayer, tahajjud, or qiyamul layl, or taraweeh, or whatever, then before fajr, when they go to sleep, they're knocked down. Waking up for the sahur meal guarantees that you will pray fajr, and you can pray fajr in jama'ah. Okay? And for that, that is the best, that is the greatest reward, and you will be in the divine protection all your day long. فَهُوَ فِي ذِمَّةِ اللَّهِ مَنْ صَلَّى الْفَجْرَ فِي جَمَّاعَةِ فَهُوَ فِي ذِمَّةِ اللَّهِ So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made that word in the uh, indefinite baraka because its blessings are indefinite تَسَحَّرُوا فَإِنَّ فِي السَّحُورِ baraka And also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recommended pushing the sahur meal towards the end of time of the night a few minutes before fajr prayer so it will enable you to resume fasting during the day and will give you some strength following hadith hadith number 1230 on zayd ibn thabit anhu ma'a rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama thumma qumna ila salah qila kam kana baynahuma قال قدر خمسين آية متفق عليه زيد بن ثابت is a great companion he is one of the scribers of the wahy and he is also the compiler of the Quran the chief officer of compiling the Quran he said once we had a sahur meal with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم we ate our sahur with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم then he stood up 
to pray. So it was asked, that's in the passive. The questioner was Anas ibn Malik, even though Anas ibn Malik was one of the attendees of the event, but it seems that he himself uh, didn't join them uh, in eating the sahur meal. But he asked Zayd ibn Thabit, radiyallahu an, how long was there between the adhan and the sahur? Yani after you finish sahur, how long did it talk before you hear the adhan? Which adhan? The adhan of Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum, the actual adhan. Which is the, 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 the declaring the appearance of dawn and the beginning of fasting. He said, as long as it takes to recite 50 verses. How long does it take you to recite 50 verses? Well, I'm not talking about you as a beginner. I'm talking about an average person. Let's say 15 minutes. Okay, 15 minutes. About. Back then, they didn't have time. They didn't have clocks. They didn't have watches. And that's why they used to estimate the time span comparing to a bodily act or a bodily activities, such as Yani, when the Prophet sallallahu spent time after burying one of the companions and he said, استغفروا لأخيكم فإنه الآن يسأل. Hang on, hang around, do not leave yet. Hang around and make istighfar, seek forgiveness for your brother who has just been buried because he's being questioned right now. So how long did he stay? We want to know. So we will practice the same sunnah when somebody dies and we'll hang around him uh, or her, spend some time to make a step far. How long would this process take? Well, the companions they didn't have watches to tell us that uh, he stayed for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, uh, an hour, an hour and a half, we don't know. But they said the time span which takes to slaughter and distribute or process the meat of a goat, so half hour, 20 minutes, perhaps around that. So they used to estimate the time based on uh, the activities that they do on a regular basis. Which means that the Prophet ﷺ used to push the sahur meal all the way close to the end of the night time. A few minutes before Fajr. And the purpose of that, so it would match the sahur time and the food would uh, you know, stay in your stomach for a longer period of time to assist you to work, to function, to study, to do whatever or to fulfill your duties during the day. Not to feel weak from the beginning of the day. Why? Because you ate at uh, you ate dinner, you ate at Isha or before midnight. So all this time you've digested the food already and now you start, uh, you know, your stomach is calling for some food. So postponing the sahur meal is the sunnah. Um, there are some more hadith in this chapter inshallah but we'll take a short break and inshallah we'll be back in a couple of minutes to tackle the rest of the hadith in this chapter, chapter uh, number 221 and inshallah begin a new one as well. Please stay tuned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran in seven different ways of recitation. Similarly, Maryam alayhi salam, she's a woman by herself. She doesn't even have a husband who's ever touched her. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted a child to Maryam alayhi salam. Look at that. She said that, how will I have a child? How will I have a child whilst I've never even been touched by a man? One of the unique things about the story is that it's not like Umar al-Khattab hasn't heard these verses. Can you imagine that Umar al-Khattab hasn't heard these verses? He became sick from the effect that this ayah ended up having on his, on his mind at that moment.
learn about how to be a great father to our children and that's from looking at Yaqub the father of Yusuf I'm your brother Asim Khan, please join me for this episode of Gems from Surah Yusuf. Our Prophet Muhammad is La ilaha illallah. It is to carry the meaning of the word La ilaha illallah to everyone, to all the people who are around him, right. as many people as he can. So, this is the mission. The mission is needed by everybody. Tell me about a person in this world who does not need mercy. Hmm. Mercy is a key way of or course. a key word for healing the hearts of human beings. And what happens is they get so many rejections mm -hmm. that they feel so bad about themselves. They don't know that what's been rejected now is your current skills, your current experience, which by time and effort can develop. You are looking for another job, but temporarily you are going to, you are doing this job, so perfect it. And this is part of our great religion, is mm. perfection. And mm. Perhaps there is another chapter about this. Perfect right. your work. Give mm -hmm. the right to the job that you have. Because for example, on, on another note, if you are not positive, you cannot motivate. Sure. If you are not positive, you cannot recognize. You cannot even look for the good things. times that we are going through today where people are fighting with each other to establish superiority. Join me as we go through lessons from Surah Al-Hujrat. Brothers and sisters, Allah has prepared for us gardens and beautiful things in the hereafter for those who do search in thee. So please, my brothers and sisters, join me with this program, inshallah ta'ala, to talk about the rewards for everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us to do or our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has encouraged us to do for those who pray, fast, or do certain deeds in our face, bismillah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all what we do. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Our phone numbers beginning with area code are 002 then 023855132. Alternatively area code 002 then 01005469323. WhatsApp numbers area code 001347806125. Finally area code 001361491503 Facebook page M. Salah official. Let me, uh, before I take the following hadith, I answer a couple of questions uh, received on the page right now. Ahmad Saleh is asking, after salam, can I make dua for a friend in my prayer who committed suicide? Um, he was the only son to his parents. Can I make dua for his parents as well? Yes, Ahmad. You can make dua for him and for his parents. Uh, his parents are more worthy, obviously, asking Allah to uh, 
grand impatience, you know, uh, and if they still have a chance to give them better than what they lost. But uh, a person who committed suicide, only Allah knows what he's been through. It could be severe depression. They didn't take the medication and he was not in his uh, right mindset. So he committed suicide. We have to set this straight. Committing suicide in Islam is a major sin and it is equivalent to kufr. But we do not say that a person who committed suicide is, is a kafir. We don't say that. And uh, we, we pray the funeral, pray for him. There is a difference of opinion in this regard, with regards to offering the funeral prayer for him. He was a Muslim. Allah knows what he's been through. In many cases, a lot of people undermine the diagnosis of depression. And a lot of people even never been to a psychiatrist and they don't know whether they are depressed or not. They, they don't know. They don't have a reason. Okay, they think that, uh, you know, it's not something clinical. They think the, the person has been possessed by the jinn or whatever and some people end up committing suicide. So we have to pay attention to those who are around us, family members, loved ones, friends, in case that they're going through depression, because depression kills. Okay? May Allah uh, save us all again. Is that. So if you know somebody who's been through that and he committed suicide, make dua for them. They're more worthy than others because if they were in their mindset and they committed suicide, this is a terrible sin. In, in the sound hadith, a person who stabbed himself, uh, it says that he will abide eternally in hellfire and he will keep stabbing himself over and over and over. And then he dies and he comes back to life and he will keep uh, being punished with the same tool that he took his life with. Whether he was throwing himself off a high place, uh, jumping off a building, or uh, you know, uh, consuming uh, a poison or whatever. May Allah protect us all and guide us what is best. Second question, can you tell me about Salatul Awabin, the six, ra six rakahs? Pray between Maghrib and Isha. Uh, the term Salatul Awabin was mentioned in a sound hadith and it was mentioned in a very weak hadith. So the sound hadith refers to as the Prophet وسلم, defined it. He said Salatul Awabin ahina tarnadul fisal. So this is referring to the Duha prayer, the four known prayer. And the best time to offer it uh, close to noon, like an hour before Dhuhr, okay, an hour before Dhuhr prayer. While the other week hadith, it refers to a narration which is collected by Ibn Majah, in which it claims that the Prophet وسلم, said, whoever prays after Maghrib and until Isha, six rakahs, two by two, and he doesn't talk in between, that would be equivalent to uh, ibadah or a worship that is over, uh, offered in a period of 12 years. As I said, this is a very, very weak hadith. But there are some other narrations which quoted the Prophet وسلم, as praying, uh, night prayer, voluntary prayer between Maghrib and Isha. So it is prescribed to pray nawafil between Maghrib and Isha beside the sunnah, the emphatic sunnah for Maghrib. But the right uh, name of al awabin is referring to the Duha prayer. I know that some of the Fuqaha used to refer to uh, prayer between Maghrib and Isha, especially in the Hanafi Madhab, uh, as awabin prayer. But that is mentioned in a very, very weak hadith. And now with the second hadith in, the, in this chapter, chapter number 221, hadith number 1231. عن ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما قال كان لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مؤذنان بلال وابن أم مكتوم فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن بلالا يؤذن بليل فكلوا واشربوا حتى يؤذن ابن أم مكتوم قال ولم يكن بينهما إلا أن ينزل هذا ويرقى هذا متفق عليه عبد الله ابن عمر ابن الخطاب May Allah be pleased with him and his father, narrated that 
The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to have two muazzin and muazzin is a person who calls azan to declare that the prayer time has uh, entered so that people would come to attend the prayer in the masjid and women would pray at home or whoever wants to pray that would declare it's already time to pray. So the two muazzins at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were Bilal ibn Rabah and uh, Abdullah, the son of Umm Maktoum. May Allah be pleased with them. When Abdullah ibn Zayd saw in a dream, and similarly Umar ibn Khattab, they saw the Adham. It was prescribed, and they saw it in, in their dreams. So they came to the Prophet Sallallahu and said, this is going to be our Adham. And he said, teach it to Bilal, فَإِنَّهُ أَنْدَى مِنْكَ صَوْتًا That tells us on what basis the Prophet ﷺ chose Bilal ibn Rabah to be the Mu'azzin and Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum to be the Mu'azzin أَنْدَى صَوْتًا يعني he has a better voice his sound is very melodious it's, it's beautiful to hear a nice adhan I have known Muslims who visit uh, Cairo and they visit my office and when they hear the adhan they say lovely I love it because we have beautiful uh, sounds mashallah you know I've met a professional engineer once she says that I love to come to Cairo exclusively because I love to hear the adhan she's not Muslim from Italy so hearing the adhan is da'wah as well and it is a declaration of faith the in order for a person to call Adan, he has to have a melodious voice. Okay? Bilal ibn Rabah used to call the first Adan. Al-Fajr has two Adans, whether in Ramadan or in any time during the year. And the time difference between them, you know, about 15 minutes. Do you remember when, um, when we, we studied the Hadith, the time between eating the sahur meal and the adhan which also indicates that what some people nowadays do especially in some parts of the world they have in the uh, in, in the timetable for the prayers throughout the year five prayers you know uh, from fajr to isha then in ramadan they add an extra time what is this extra time imsak time so they have Fajr at 6 a.m. Imsak, 5.45 or 5.30. Then the rest of the prayer times as usual. What is Imsak? They say because you have to stop eating at this time. That is not true. This is pure innovation. Imsak, it's okay to use it as a reference. Be careful. You only have uh, 15 minutes till the actual time. You only have 30 minutes for Adhan or Fajr. But to say imsak, yani to withhold, to stop eating and drinking and to begin fasting, that is not true. Because it opposes what Allah the Almighty said in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى until حَتَّى تَلْ يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ So you can eat and drink until you hear the actual adhan. Or if you have time and it says adhan al-fajr, uh, according to the timetable, 6 a.m. So 6 a.m. Exactly, stop eating and drinking. If you see it 6.01 and you still eat, then you broke your fast. And those who eat and drink while hearing the actual adam, they have violated their fasting. And they should make up that day. Because the word hatta solves house any dispute in this regard. You don't say, but the hadith says, if you hear the adhan while eating, drinking, finish your meal first. This is the first adhan, the adhan of Bilal. This hadith says, فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِنَّ بِلَالًا يُؤَذِّنُ بِلَيْلِ فَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يُؤَذِّنَ بْنُ أُمِّ مَكْتُومِ And this is a sound hadith agreed upon its authenticity. He says, you guys, do not be deceived or tricked by the adhan of Bilal. 
When he calls the adhan, it's still night. It's not dawn yet. There's still a few minutes, uh, 10, 15 minutes. One of them finishes, Bilal finishes adhan, then he descends because they used to climb on top of the masjid so that when they call adhan, everybody would hear them. So Bilal would descend and Abdullah ibn Ubay, Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum was a blind companion. Somebody would lead him upstairs, go home, uh, take him to the top of the masjid. Then he would say, Azan, Azan, it's time. So he would start calling Azan. The person would say Azan, it's based on his, you know, uh, visualizing uh, the dawn. Al Hablu al Abyad, Al Khaytu al Abyad, Min al Khaytu al Aswad, Min al Fajr. You see the criterion between the day and the night, that's called dawn. Nowadays, all of us have. Islamic finders or whatever app that tells us the prayer time. So if you know that it's accurate and Fajr is at 6 a.m., then 6 or 1 do not eat. I have all night long from, from Maghrib until 6 a.m. You don't drink. Why do you keep pushing yourself to the edge and jeopardizing the validity of your fasting? Those who might see in the masjid or in the haram, they hear the actual adhan in which the second adhan or the actual adhan in which you hear as salatu khayru min al nawm and they're still eating and drinking they gotta make up that day they violated their fasting so Abdullah ibn Umar who narrated this hadith said that the Prophet sallallahu used to have two muadzins Bilal and Ab uh, Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum you know who's Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum he is a companion of the story of Abasa wa Tawalla the Quran was revealed in his regard. And Ja'ahu al-A'ma, the blind man. So, the Prophet sallallahu alerted the companions. You guys, do not let the adhan of Bilal stop you from doing what is halal. Outside fasting, eating, drinking, eating, drinking. Uh, even having sexual relations with your spouse. All of that is okay. Because it is not time yet. Only when you hear the Adhan of Umm Maktoub. The word Hatta in Arabic is a very important word. Hatta means Ghaiya. Until. Once that happens, it's over. Salamun hiya Hatta matala al Fajr. So the night of Al Qadr is all blessed and the blessings are throughout the entire night until dawn. Khalas, the night is over. When is dawn? When the Mu'addin says, Allahu Akbar. With the first takbir, the night is over. And now it's uh, daytime. That's why Allah says also in Surah Al-Baqarah, Kulu wa kulu, eat wa shrabu and drink, hatta, hatta until yatabayyana lakumul khay, until you're certain it's already uh, the criterion between the night and the day. It's dawn. Then you stop eating and drinking. And he did not mention the sexual relations because it's understood. If you can eat and drink, then you can enjoy also having an intimate relationship. And once you start withholding from all of those activities. فَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يُؤَذِّنَ بْنُ أُمِّ مَكْتُومِ قَالَ عبد الله بن عمر said and the time span between them was not more than this, that one climbed down from the minaret and the other climbed up to announce the adhan. Yani a few minutes. So what we see in the timetables nowadays, imsak time, half hour or so before Fajr or 15 minutes before Fajr and people assume this is imsak, yani withholding, this is the beginning of fasting. That is not true, nor is it valid. And we have to give people ease. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, my ummah would remain in good shape, Islamically, from Islamic point of view, so long as they hasten to break the fast, and so long as they postpone and delay the sahur meal a few minutes before Fajr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to what is best, by that we've come to the end of today's edition of Gardens of the Pious until next episode. Assalamu alaikum 
ورحمة الله وبركاته So why did they know that? Forgetting all about hell in paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling their best with the cheapest price